Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 76th episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, as well as the 16th episode of Season 2, titled Beauty and the Beast. We begin at the Youth Center where Kimberly is looking longingly at an ugly ass mirror that apparently Tommy won for her at a carnival, while Billy tries to move in on Tommy's girl. On the moon, Goldar bellows about how the Rangers suck without Tommy, so Zed decides to target Kim to become his queen because that's not creepy at all. Kim says that she needs to shake this gloomy mood and she sees an ad in the newspaper about a fortune teller named Madam Swampy, who can see the future and she decides that that's the best plan of action to find out about Tommy. Not dead, Kim. Jeez. Her and Billy leave, and Billy says, I have to stop and get my rollerblades, okay? And like the sassiest tone ever. Bulk and Skull come in to harass the workers for food, and they see the ad, taking the newspaper and running so they can find out who the Power Rangers are. Apparently, they beat Billy and Kim to Madam Swampy, and they enter through beaded curtains to meet with Mimi from the Drew Carey show. They're short on cash, and all they want to know is who the Power Rangers are, so she gives them a map that will lead them to something that will make them happy. On the moon, Zed commands Goldar to retrieve the Pink Ranger to bring her to the dark side, and Goldar says that he's going to train her well. Outside the trailer park where Madam Swampy resides, I guess, Kim is there alone before she's attacked by Goldar and Putties. Where did Billy go? Goldar manhandles Kimberly and explains that she's going to be Zed's new queen, and he roofies her with gold glitter, knocking her out. There's something really uncomfortable about how Goldar just picks up an unconscious Kim and leaves. We see that she dropped the mirror that Tommy gave her, and of course, Zed turns this into a monster known as Mirror Maniac. Zack and Billy are rollerblading in the park by the beach, talking about Jason, who is just not there whatsoever. They get an alert from Zordon about something happening, so they teleport there to meet up with Trini. Zordon fills them in on how he just watched Kim get date raped by a monkey in gold armor, and how he doesn't know where the cave where Kim is. Zordon sees Richie and Curtis rollerblading as well through the park, and Zed decides to attack them with putties? Why? They're like not even Power Rangers. What are you doing? The alarms go off at the command center and Billy, Zack, and Trini see what's going on with Richie and Curtis, so they split up. Zack will handle the putties while Billy and Trini morph to rescue Kim. Billy asks an obvious question. What about Jason? According to Zordon, the mountains that Jason is visiting are shielding him from their signal. What? It's morphin' time for Billy and Trini, who run toward the cave to be stopped by putties. Zack shows up in the park to help Curtis and Richie, and we cut between the two putty fights repeatedly to show that they're happening simultaneously, which is kind of cool and different for this show. Billy and Trini win and run into the cave while Zack meets up with Curtis and Richie, and Richie explains that those are the putties and they've been on the news all the time. In the cave, Babu, Squat, and Goldar yell at Kim to become Zed's new queen, and she's given Rita's old clothes. Her morpher and communicator are taken away by the villains, so apparently the spell never even worked. So Kim acts like Rita, showing that Amy Jo Johnson is literally the only actor on this show earning that $8.50 an hour. Billy and Trini run in, and Billy takes on Goldar before the three bail. Zed is obviously angry that his plan sucks, so he sends Mirror Maniac down to attack the city by firing lasers at buildings. Billy, Kim, and Trini are caught up on the situation, and apparently Alpha got in contact with Jason, who is now with Zack, and are now on their way from the park to fight the Mirror Maniac, so Kim morphs. The five rangers are all together, and of course, they can only fight putties while Mirror Maniac yells from off screen. There's an awesome scene where the Pink Ranger does an awesome aerial kick against a putty that really shows that the stunt people on this show are way better than anyone ever gives them a chance to be. After beating the putties, Zed just makes Mirror Maniac grow because he literally has no other option in this hell called Season 2, so the Rangers call out their Thunder Zords, forming the Thunder Megazord. Then we see that the giant Mirror Maniac clearly has a shattered mirror center now, but we just ignore it as there's a boring ass Megazord fight that ends quicker than it began thanks to the Thunder Saber. R.I.P. ugly ass carnival mirror from that one dude with long hair. At the youth center, Kim can't find the mirror Tommy gave her as she sits with Zack and Billy. Curtis comes up, giving Kim the mirror while Bulk and Skull waltz in, explaining that the map has taken them to the youth center. Billy picks it up after their defeat to see that the back of the map leads to a free protein muffin at the juice bar. Bulk and Skull say screw it, and they take their free muffins, but it's actually a free muffin when you buy lunch. 
They have no money, so Ernie just gives them aprons because now they have to wash dishes. This episode is the epitome of season two. Austin St. John is only ever seen in the opening credits. Monster can't fight the Rangers hand to hand, so there's a lot of putty fights. And Sutrini sounds like a white girl attempting an Asian girl accent, but then she just gives up halfway through. And Richie and Curtis get more screen time than Twee Trang. It's rough as hell, but next time, things start to change a bit for us. But until then, may the power protect you.